Hello everyone. So, good news and bad news. The bad news? There's a reality-destroying entity coming to Earth who's dead set on killing every living thing on the planet. He'll arrive around 2025, on the same day as GTA 6's release date, which is a huge problem. However, there's some good news. God, the Father Almighty, has given me the privilege to create the perfect character to defeat him. I can give him any amount of ridiculous abilities to ensure his survival. First off, this character will have full control over physics, matter, time, and space. He can tweak and change around the inner workings of existence, throw around stars like their ping pong balls, turn the ocean into milk, mess with the fundamental elements of life, and twist and contort the dead until it becomes completely irrelevant. For his durability, it's infinite. You can quite literally hit him with infinite big bangs worth of energy, and you'll be completely unscathed. His speed is irrelevant, because he exists every everywhere at the same time, and thus, speed doesn't matter. He exists within the past, present, and future all at once, and can access them without effort. He has a form of future sight that lets him know an attack is coming billions of years in advance. If you're within 100 light years of him, your powers will be completely turned off, and you'll be nerfed to a newborn baby in terms of physical stats. He can't die because death does not exist as a concept for him. He's completely untouchable due to existing outside the planes of reality, and thus attacks cannot reach him. And since I'm a huge fan of Lovecraft and Stephen King, this character's existence is so horrific that even thinking about him or glancing at him will cause your mind to literally explode from fear. This character is named Big Obliteration Boy, otherwise known as Bob. Hello everyone. My name is Bob. And he'll be our savior against his eldritch monstrosity. Speaking of which, let's see who exactly this monstrosity is. It's not like he'll be any real threat. <laughs> Hello everyone, this is Bot Iron Repair. And nowadays, every Isekai author wants to one-up each other in terms of powerful protagonists. They either have insane skills that are hard to overcome, possess incredible fighting skills nobody can match, have incredible destructive potential, and some even become literal gods in their stories. Every Isekai protagonist is essentially fighting for the role of the strongest and most broken character, spawning intense debates among the Isekai fanbase. It seems author Fujitaka Shiyoshi wanted to end this debate once and for all by creating a character so broken and so powerful that you wonder how he can possibly make the story interesting and whether or not it's possible for any character in fiction to beat him. This is Takato Yogiri. He's a protagonist of the light novel series, my instant death ability so overpowered. No one in this other world stands a chance against me. Based on the title alone, you can infer what the story of this series is, and the broken abilities of the series protagonist. At the core of Yogiri's character is an extraordinary ability which sets him apart from others in the Isekai genre. Unlike many protagonists who gradually gain strength or learn new skills, Yogiri's power is inherently lethal. With one word, or even a mere thought, he can bring about the instantaneous demise of anyone or anything. This power, often referred to as the instant death ability, establishes Yogiri as a force to be reckoned with within the fantasy realm. He doesn't need to engage in lengthy battles or undergo extensive training to overcome formidable foes. Instead, his mere presence becomes a threat, and his encounters are marked by a swift and decisive resolution. Like I've mentioned before, Yogiri can one-shot any foe with a single word. Regardless of their speed, power, or defense. Once these words leave Yogiri's mouth, any what he targets will instantly die without question. Sometimes they don't die right away, but death is a fate nobody can escape, so some will take a few seconds before they feel the effects of the ability. By now, I'm sure you understand how powerful this kid's ability is, but is he unstoppable? We've seen plenty of characters in comics and manga who are seemingly unbeatable calamities only for them to get beaten in their stories. If I attack him before he says or thinks anything, that'll be an instant debut, right? The Flash has achieved speeds exceeding the concept of irrelevant speed, as he traveled from one end of the universe to the other in less than a Planck instant. In the time it took for me to say this, Archie Sonic traveled to every individual planet in the universe, even the ones outside of the observable universe. With this kind of speed, maybe both Flash and Sonic can jump Yogiri before he gets a chance to say anything. Well, not quite. Yogiri has a spider sense-like ability that detects any hostility towards him. 
No matter their distance, he can then proceed to kill them from a distance instantaneously. It's like a form of precognition, so it's basically impossible to sneak attack him. This ability even works across universes and dimensions. Don't think shutting his mouth will save you either. Him simply thinking about it will kill you as well. Yogiri can also kill certain body parts and even senses, crippling an opponent forever. So even if you chop off your paralyzed legs and regrow them, they'll still be paralyzed as Yogiri's death ability is completely permanent no matter what you do. Emphasis on forever, because once Yogiri kills you, that's it. You're just gone. You can't revive yourself. You can't travel back in time to escape it, which someone tried. Nothing. Once you're dead, it's as if you never existed. Even beings that don't have to constant a death, beings that have powerful defensive abilities, and beings who are undead cannot escape, as Yogiri can bypass those defenses and end them. This instant death ability is not just limited to living things. Yogiri can kill inanimate objects like clothing, weapons, and even concepts like momentum. He often uses this ability to destroy attacks before they reach him and his allies. His instant death ability is as the name implies. Instant, as it can even outspeed other passive abilities. Even opponents with attacks that can move at the speed of light are afraid of attacking him, even if they could theoretically kill him before he even thinks. Yogiri can also see and detect black lines on a person or object, which will indicate that there's something dangerous about them. Basically, Yogiri is the mystic eyes of death perception given human form. Yogiri can apparently mark individuals with his power, which basically means that anyone who attacks them will die instantly. Okay, this is getting a bit ridiculous, to be honest. Well, maybe you could use powerful magic on Yogiri. Maybe teleport him to another dimension, burn him to a crisp, or freeze him solid. Well, that's not gonna work either. Yogiri has killed ice magic, an ability so strong that it's basically unbreakable with any other conventional methods. However, Yogiri killed it and shattered it into pieces with a single kick. Yogiri killed the immortal Queen Maya, a being with a concept of death, does not apply to, and theoretically should not have been able to be killed. Yogiri killed someone who couldn't be perceived in any way. Yogiri managed to kill an army of undead warriors, each of which shouldn't be able to get killed. Okay, so maybe the only way to fully defeat Yogiri is to use the future to our advantage. Use precognition to craft a plan so perfect that there's no way you can- Yeah, that's not gonna work. Yukimasa has a novel that automatically writes events, exposing what will happen in the near future. Furthermore, Yukimasa can partially rewrite the events detailed by erasing what he can and writing new possible events of his choosing. However, he can't write whatever he wants because his narrative only allows events that can realistically happen. When he found out that he died to Hanzo Yogiri, he attempted to change his fate. However, even with his ability, he could never rewrite his own death. Every attempt to do so would only result in failure, as the book would simply replace death with other words like not alive, life ceases to exist, brain activity will cease, fast food, and other stuff. Showcasing how Yogiri can manipulate fate itself. We can't even rely on gods or godlike beings to defeat Yogiri. Proof of this was his ability to kill the heavenly record Eater, a conceptual cosmic entity who exists outside and transcends time and space. Speaking of which, the Heavenly Record Eater can control time to a degree which can see into the future and travel through the past and future. It can also control space and manipulate any phenomena it encompasses, such as black holes. The Record Eater is often larger than several universes and holds the destructive power capable of destroying a universe and perhaps even a multiverse. It can also create avatars that are capable of a lot of its feats, but despite all this, Yogiri still killed them effortlessly with a single word, meaning Yogiri can one-shot entities that transcend and destroy universes. Yogiri at first glance may look like a normal human, sound like a normal human, and even has the physical capabilities of a normal human, but don't let that fool you. Yogiri is far from human. He isn't even an alien, or a demon, or even an angel. Yogiri is in fact the living embodiment of the end, in other words, death. An inescapable fate that everything will eventually experience. He's an eldritch monstrosity mimicking the appearance of a normal human, likely because his true form is incomprehensible to the human mind. 
The Yogiri we witnessed throughout the series isn't even his strongest form, as most of his power was sealed away. So the Yogiri we see in the series is technically 20% of his full power. Because death is the ultimate form of fate, that also means fate is always on Yogiri's side, as several individuals can see the future, couldn't witness a future where they could win. All paths led to his victory. So basically, no matter what you do, Yogiri will always win, due to fate itself being on his side. Yogiri as a being is completely above all possible aspects of existence, such as the entire collective multiverse, time, space, matter, gravity, and more. Because again, he is the embodiment of the end, the final destination of all things. Even full on gods who rule over the multiverse have omnipotence and control life and death as they see fit, cease to exist when in his presence. Speaking of which, those of godlike status are sent to a plane of existence called the Void upon their demise. The Void is an aspect of Yogiri's existence, an endless black abyss which is impossible to escape, and the ability whether it's reality manipulation, teleportation, body swapping, time travel, dimensional travel, or matter manipulation is completely worthless as they won't function at all, making anyone who ends up here trapped for eternity. How is it possible that this great one somehow found himself in the body of a generic looking isekai protagonist? Well, the body we see throughout the series is only a vessel, an avatar constructed by this higher power with the goal of interacting with the world. For the comic fans out there, it's sort of like how Dr. Manhattan constructed a blue body so people could have something to talk to and look at. As a result of this, however, Yogiri can't truly be defeated. Sure, you could kill his physical body, but the true form of Yogiri will be entirely unaffected since they exist in a higher plane of existence. If they ever decided to show themselves, our very minds would shatter as humans were never meant to glimpse into this form. However, just because he's in a human form doesn't mean he's any weaker. Yogiri as a result of wanting to be human as possible would immediately seal away his abilities which he calls gates. There are three gates in total and once each is released, Yogiri has access to more and more of his power. The first gate allows Yogiri to kill physical beings and detect killing intent. The second gate allows Yogiri to kill concepts, properties, and non-physical objects and abstract beings. The third gate is well, just Yogiri in his true form. Now he's beyond the concept of omnipresence and omnipotence. He can exist everywhere at once, all throughout time, and kill any being regardless of how powerful they are. So is Yogiri Takuto the strongest Isekai protagonist? Well yes, by a large margin. There's no other Isekai protagonist who can hope to match him in his level of power. Even if they supposedly have broken abilities, lack the concept of death, or become gods at the end of their stories, that won't matter. All it takes is one word to send them to the Gulag. However, is Yogiri the strongest character in fiction? Well, not even close. While I understand that he's incredibly powerful, there are plenty of beings who can match him or at least resist his instant death ability. Beings like the Endless of DC Comics, who Yogiri's on par with in terms of their nature and existence. Destiny is the embodiment of many concepts like time and fate. Everything that's ever happened, everything that will happen, everything you do are all written in the book, chained to himself. If you want to do things, whether walking, eating, sleeping, you are abiding by desire. Every living thing has a desire to do something, no matter how small. If everything has a beginning, then everything also has an end. If something is built, whether alive or inanimate, its destruction will always come. The Endless are a group of siblings, each representing fundamental concepts, and when I mean fundamental, I mean it. You can't destroy them because they are, well, endless. Killing them will only kill an aspect of them, which gets replaced instantaneously, as the Endless exists beyond the realms of our reality. The forms you see are simply avatars we can interact with. Like if you kill Desire, that's not really gonna do anything because you desire to kill them and you'll continue to desire to do other things, which means they'll still exist. And if you kill them for good? Well again, that is impossible, and the only way to rid them for good would be to completely delete the universe into nothingness, which still abides by destruction, so I guess not. Yogiri is the living concept of the end, but he only represents a part of our reality, alongside dream, death, desire, despair, destruction, and so much more. 
Yogiri can't kill them because they'll always exist. He'll always embody what they represent, and he relies on them just as much as they rely on him. Yogiri has desire, he has delirium, he has despair, he has dream. He is as much a part of existence as they are. Yogiri probably can't kill the chosen undead from Dark Souls because of the existence of the first flame, which represents the disparity of all existence. In order for him to destroy the chosen undead, he'd have to overpower the dark sign, which is tied to the first flame, which is impossible because the first flame is similar to him just without any free will or the concept of thought. Yogiri likely can't kill Azatoth, a being in which the concept of the end, fate, existence are merely a dream to him. For the Fazbear is a being Yogiri wouldn't dare to mess with in fear of being called the next purple guy. Toon Force characters like Popeye will likely be able to square up with Yogiri, and before you put your glasses on and throw a bunch of power scaling terms at me, Toon Force characters can't really be scaled. Anything they find funny or the writer finds funny will become a reality. As such, they've survived the existence erasure when God turned off the universe and transcended their own books into the real world to beat up their own author and more. As a result, if they found the concept of surviving Yogiri's power to be funny, it will happen. What I'm trying to say is, Yogiri likely can't kill beings who represent the same concept he does. He can't kill fundamental forces that will always exist even if he kills them. He can't kill the true god who created every concept including life and death. He can't kill Toon Force characters. He can't… you know, I don't want to ramble on about who can beat Yogiri. That's a job for you guys or some random forum. I, I don't know. Let me know in the comments. Yogiri is incredibly powerful, and there's very few isekai protagonists out there who can hope to defeat him. I mean, that was basically the sole purpose behind his creation, a character who purely exists just so we can talk about how strong he is, which is one of the few redeeming qualities about this series in general.